Hi and uh, welcome everyone again. In this video, I want to go over the properties of matrix operations and I put part one because the other part, part two is going to be in the next video. Part one, we're going to talk about matrix addition and uh, the zero matrices. So let's go over these properties and the, the theorem. So if A, B and C are an M and uh, n by n matrices and c and d are just scalars again remember this notation these are real numbers then we can have the following properties the following properties of uh, addition and subtraction of matrices this one is only for addition a plus b equals to b plus a and don't forget these are just the matrices so this is the community property of addition a plus parentheses B plus C equals to parentheses A plus B plus C. That's the associative property of addition. C times D inside the parentheses times A can be written as C times DA. And that's the associative property of multiplication for, this, for the scalar multiplication. One times A equals to A. So one times any matrix is gonna give you that the same matrix. So that's the multiplicative identity. C times A plus B equals to C A plus C B. And that's the distributive property and distributed with the scalar, or you can just say C plus D equal inside the parentheses time as is C A times D A. And that's also the distributive property with the matrix. Now I just want you to know these are theorems. So all these theorems uh, or the six properties can be proven. And let me go over one of them or a couple of them. So you'll know. Now, given A is an N by N matrix and uh, B is an N by N matrix also, prove that A plus B equals to B plus A. So whenever you, one of most of the time when you prove the properties of matrices it's a good idea to use the compact form so i wrote a as aij it's an n by n matrix b is bij n by n matrix that's how you can show it when you do a plus b you just add the corresponding we know that the corresponding entries so that's n by n plus n by n it's going to give you a i j plus b i j and that's also n by n remember these are just numbers because the matrix is an array of numbers so you can use the community property for numbers so this a i j plus b i j can be written as b i j plus a i j and again that's an m n matrix matrix the size doesn't change now we can separate those you can write this as b ij or b sub ij plus the matrix a sub uh, ij so and don't forget to put the sizes and that's the same thing as b plus a so a plus b equals to b plus a and of course when you finish that if you want you can put qed next we are going to talk about the zero matrix Zero matrix is denoted as zero M uh, by N. Example, if you, you see zero two by three, that means that's a two by three matrix where all the entries are, are zeros. And if you wanna show the compact form, you can just put equals to just this uh, the same way. You can put zero, that means all the entries are zero and it's an M by N matrix. You take a matrix plus the zero matrix, you get the same matrix. And if you subtract the same matrix, uh, matrix from uh, the same matrix, then you're gonna get the zero matrix. You subtract the entries and they're the same, so they think that's pretty straight forward. Now there's a theorem here. It says if alpha equals to zero alpha again this is scalar multiplication if you take alpha and multiply by a matrix and you get zero then you have 
the conclusion is alpha equals to zero or A equals to the zero matrix. So this first part is the hypothesis and that's the conclusion. Let's prove this. So we're gonna prove this by case of alpha. There are two cases, be careful. First case, we say that alpha equals to zero. So by scalar multiplication, zero times A, that means zero times every single entry in the matrix. And uh, you can write it like that, zero times any number is zero. So basically it's gonna give you the zero matrix. And you can write that as zero M by sub M by N. Case number two, we assume that alpha is not equal to zero. So it can be any number but zero. And we know that if you multiply alpha times A, you're gonna get the zero matrix. So let's write it. Alpha times A, that means alpha times every single entry in the matrix and it's gonna give us the zero matrix and every single entry becomes zero. So alpha times A, equals to zero. We know that alpha, we said it's not zero here. So if alpha is not equal to zero, then we can solve for the entries of the matrix. And if we do that, it's gonna be zero divided by alpha, divide both sides by alpha here and you get zero. So conclusion is every single entry becomes zero. So it's a, the main conclusion is alpha equals to the, you know, this was there for alpha equals to zero or A equals to zero matrix. Let me tell you this conclusion, I just wrote it from, from here. So it works, the conclusion, and that was the proof. So I think this is part one, the second uh, part, I'll uh, do the second part of the matrix, uh, properties of matrix operations and uh, that's gonna be about multiplication. And I think we can just stop here for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.